Yeah. All right, so here you can see McCutcheon Manor, right? And uh, right now we're located at the theater, so we're over here. And then to the right over here is uh, the approach corridor. This is uh, yellowed out because this is the approach corridor for runway one. Down here on the bottom, you can see the mat where we have uh, uh, some of the Ospreys. And then over here on the left is the 53s. So this is Curtis Road coming around here, which is the, uh, the main road coming in from the main gate. And then over here is Camp Geiger. As we talk about this right now, I want to talk about the northern part of the field, and we're going to work in a counterclockwise fashion going around with all the construction updates. So as you look at this slide, anything in light blue that you see here is water. That's a collection pond or a retention pond somewhere on the base. And uh, this is important later on, so as you look at the, the next three slides, I'd like to reinforce that uh, with the collection ponds. Anything in bright red like this is a new construction facility. And anything in royal blue here is a renovation and modernization of a facility. And those are the things that I really want to talk about here uh, as we go around. So the first thing I'm going to talk about all the way up in the top right-hand corner here, it doesn't have any of, the, uh, uh, any of the construction codes on it, but this is building 612. It used to be the Youth and Teen Center. And uh, most recently, it was uh, home of the wrestling team uh, for the Marine Corps. That has been turned back over to New River from MCCS, and that is going to be a spiritual fitness center. This is going to be the first one in the Marine Corps, and really it's trying to tie uh, some of the initiatives we have with uh, physical health, mental health, emotional health, and, and tying the whole Marine and, and whole uh, person concept together to support. So not necessarily religious, but spirituality. And what we found in and the religious ministry team and, and Chaplain Beasley is very much more eloquent on talking about this is that somebody who has a, a, a spiritual belief system, not necessarily religious, but a spiritual belief system is a much more resilient person. Uh, that definition is up to each individual, uh, but having some sort of, of spirituality uh, is a vast um, uh, indicator in somebody's resilience and, uh, and resistance to mental health issues, suicide issues, and some of the other things we see. So we see this building here in 612 as an opportunity the skate park will stay open. The hockey rink is going to stay open. The playground on it will not be open. Uh, but we're going to do some, uh, some small modernization on the inside. And there will be open areas uh, for use by, uh, by residents and by Marines. Uh, we still haven't totally defined the space yet. But, uh, but our hopes is we develop this. And as we, as we expand spiritual readiness, which is a Navy mission, specifically uh, Navy Chaplain Corps, and we talk about that. It's a, uh, excuse me, a, a Chief of Naval Operations uh, priority as we start expanding that we'll be able to use the the spiritual fitness center uh, in a in a much more aggressive way to assist with some of our other programs we have with uh, with prevention specifically uh, moving off to the immediate left of 612 right here McCutcheon Manor uh, if you've been here for a while you probably heard that we're looking at a replacement uh, housing uh, area for McCutcheon Manor we put that in as a request in the uh, in the palm last year uh, for, the, uh, for approval in the budget, and it did not make the funded list. Uh, we got recognition that, yes, it is a priority because of the age of the housing and, and the need for it, so we still have that in. We're submitting it again in this year's uh, budget, and it's in part of our request, and it is one of our priorities. Uh, the problem is competition with a lot of those priorities means that with a finite pot of money, we don't always get everything funded we want, and sometimes we have to wait several years before we have projects get picked up. A good example of that we'll talk about later on is a fuel farm, where it took us four years from our first request to get it to be actually funded in something that's on the schedule. We have another one, which is the, uh, the replacement HMLA hangar that we actually got approval for and, and programmed out, but we didn't get any funds for. So we have several, uh, several projects that are in the queue that we have identified as priorities that are, that are going to come up. So when that does, our initial proposal for that is we're looking at a roughly uh, 200 home uh, project for that to be done in phases so we don't have to evict all the residents at once and we can have a logical flow of construction and still provide housing for, uh, for the enlisted uh, families who choose to live on New River. Uh, as that happens, we'll make sure that through uh, AMCC and the, uh, and the RABs that we make sure that residents know as this comes on. But uh, if this gets approved, it'll still be several years down the road. So most of us, uh, except for some of the civilians with, with legs on them, uh, we probably won't see the end result of that just because of the cycle it takes. So I would anticipate that it's going to be 
uh, a good five or six years before we would break any ground on it if we, uh, if we get it approved right now. Uh, and, and that's just the reality of how we do construction. Uh, next, as we look at some of the, uh, the projects here, down to the, uh, uh, the bottom of the screen, just below housing, this is AS495. This is a new CNAT training facility and headquarters building. Uh, the Center for Naval Aviation Technical Training, this trains Osprey and 53 mechanics and crew chiefs in the basic fundamentals they have for aircraft maintenance. And they have almost cut out models of Ospreys and 53s in there. If you've driven around in that area on, uh, on Campbell Street to McAvoy, you've probably seen it right next to the water tower. And uh, that's where they do the initial training for, uh, for Osprey and 53 mechanics. They have throughput from the Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps, and they're getting 21st century uh, hangars and 21st century uh, aircraft to train on so that they can do all of the things they'll do when they get to the fleet so we have a much more prepared cadre of, of Marines when they get to their first duty station. Just below that, we have these, uh, these blue facilities here. So this big facility you see right here is, uh, is the V-22 hangar for uh, VMMT-204. That just had some modernization done to it and some renovations. Uh, that is complete. Just outside that and to the, to the north of that, we have uh, the tower for uh, air traffic control. Uh, the air traffic control facility is pretty old, and we're doing some renovations to that uh, in the next couple of years, specific to the equipment that we use to run the radar and the, uh, and the control tower. So there's going to be some, uh, some efforts to modernize that. That's going to mean setting up a parallel facility right next to it to host some of that equipment as we do that renovation. <clears throat> Moving on farther to the left, you see this is another big retention pond here. And if you've been out at the corner where, uh, where the fuel farm is over here, you see the fuel facility. Uh, that huge retention pond by VI Pete's that has all the alligators and snapping turtles, that's probably the largest one on the base. Uh, as I point out all these retention ponds, it's important to know because uh, our, uh, one of the projects we have down to the southwest is an infiltration base, and that I'm going to point out. But everywhere you see light blue water on here, these large areas of light blue water, these are all going to be funneled down into an infiltration basin and we'll be able to reclaim some of that land in the next couple of years as we improve the, uh, uh, the storm surge and the, uh, the capacity for, for water handling, storm water, rain water, uh, through the infiltration basin. Over here, this is the fuel farm. We have four fuel tanks that hold about 900,000 gallons of JP5. Those were built in the 1970s. And we have a plan to replace that facility and move that to the center of the airfield. And when we get down to the southern uh, picture, I'll show you that. But when we talk about removing and replacing the, uh, the fuel facility and relocating it, that's it. Uh, that's where the fuel facility is right now. And if you look at the proximity of the, uh, the facility to some of the other things in the area, uh, you can see why we'd want to move it. So here's the facility. We have a gym here. We have Delaleo Elementary School. We have a CDC here. We have another uh, another area that's going to be a CDC. We also have uh, marine and family programs in here. And then we have the big cantonment area where most of the uh, station headquarters people work. And then right over here on this side, we have lots of barracks, right? So there's a whole lot of things around there that we probably shouldn't have a fuel farm next to. So being able to move it to the middle of the, uh, the airfield is, uh, is gonna be a big win for us. Plus we get 21st century equipment, remove some of those fuel lines from underground and make everything uh, a more resilient and, uh, and better able to support the Marines on the flight line. Another huge win, if you look over here, this is AS4000. AS4000 is the old gym right behind the, uh, the single Marine program building. Uh, that just underwent an extensive renovation and it's been closed for a long time. That's opening back up hopefully next month. We've got just about everything finalized with that, just a couple more punch list items on it. It'll get turned back over to us and when it does, uh, we're gonna have a grand opening for that and Coincident with that, we've also got a project in to put 24-7 access for the gym. If you've ever been to Quantico or over to Marsoc or some of the places out in, uh, in Miramar, there is 24-hour access to gyms and it's coded just like getting into a flight line or getting into a, uh, uh, a secure building. You basically register with your CAC at the gym with one of the personnel in the gym during business hours. When you do that, they'll scan your CAC and then there'll be a certain section with uh, uh, probably machine weights and then uh, fitness cardio equipment that we'll be able to use with 24-7 access, all right? Uh, and that's station money that we we're investing in that so that we have better access for residents uh, all, uh, all day long, so 24 hours. It'll be a small area at first, and then hopefully with a lot of the Commandant's investment and 24-7 access to the gyms that he just started, 
that's about two years behind where we were. We should get more access to other gyms on Geiger and, uh, and 4400 later on, depending on demand. Okay, down here on the bottom left of this slide, two buildings in red. This first one here is a barracks. Uh, this barracks is a 300 bed barracks. Uh, it's been under construction for a couple years now and replaced several that were damaged during Hurricane Florence. Uh, it's overrun on timeline a little bit, but everything has with COVID and some of our, uh, uh, some of our construction delays that we've had just because of workforce and, uh, and supply shortages. We're forecast that's gonna open in the next couple months. And when it does, that is going to give us the ability to move Marines out of two other barracks so we can de uh, demolish or renovate those. Right now, building occupancy for the barracks on New River fluctuates between about 75% to 95%, depending on whether we have both MUs in town or a MU deployed. So right now, we're at about 75% barracks occupancy out of our 2,600 bed spaces for enlisted Marines. Uh, this is gonna help out because we really don't have excess capacity to move people around or to surge if we have a problem with the barracks. This buys us capacity so we can demolish some of our older ones. And our oldest barracks were made in 1983. So we've got 40-year-old barracks that Marines are living in. And, uh, and we're going to put those Marines in something that's going to be four months old. So that's a, that's a huge win for us and gets us more, uh, more barracks and, and better conditions. One of the other things that comes along with that is the maintenance uh, and, and the quality of life for the Marines in those barracks. Newer systems, modern. Uh, they're, they're better run with technology. We're battling with some old systems that go anywhere from geothermal uh, heating and cooling to two pipe systems, which mean you can have heat or you can have cold air, but you can't have both and there's a transition time. We have old barracks that have external access rooms, uh, more like a motel, and we have newer barracks that have internal access, which are like hotel rooms where you have controlled access in and out from the internal access, easier to maintain quality uh, of life and, and security easier on the uh, HVAC to maintain temperature control and humidity. Uh, so big win to get newer barracks with those better systems in them that are, gonna, uh, that are gonna do better for our Marines, especially as we get towards summertime here in hurricane season. Right next to that, uh, there's another building here. That is the new Naval Medical uh, Center, or health clinic, excuse me, for New River. That is gonna be a 21st century facility for both medical and dental. Uh, we anticipate that's gonna open the end of March or beginning of April and we're pretty excited for that. So 21st century care for the Marine sailors uh, on New River uh, with that system. And, uh, and we anticipate in the next two weeks, we're gonna have that uh, ready to go and start moving in, Commander Sorry. Yep. Yeah. So, so we're in the final stages of that. They've already got the shrubs in, they've got some mulch around all the flower beds and they're, uh, they're pulling down a lot of the fences. So we're, uh, I know everybody's uh, itching to, to occupy that building. So that's another huge win when we look at the, uh, the service we provide to Marines and sailors, and even something as simple as Wi-Fi reception in the building. If you've ever been in our medical building, you know it's a, it's a black hole of communications, even worse than being on the flight line. So little things like that are, uh, are big wins with these projects. Definitely didn't pre-flight the pointer. Julie? <laughs> no, uh, next slide. Maybe I don't see that. The next slide. Oh, there it is. Awesome. Thanks, XO. All right, so what you're looking at here is the southwestern side of the airfield. So the picture we just looked at, uh, the bottom of the, the previous slide was right up here. So you're looking at uh, White Street and Canal Street here. And then this is Douglas Road that goes out to the back gate. So same color coding here if you look at the, uh, uh, the different color slides. So working from top to bottom, we just talked about the new barracks, 707, and the new uh, medical center. Over here... We have modernization projects on two different hangars. This is the old MALS 26 hangar. And then over here, this is the former HMH hangar, uh, 3905, which now hosts uh, uh, HMH 461 and soon to be HMH, one, or excuse me, VMM 162. 
and then VMM 261 when they get back from deployment. So two of those modules are complete, one more module to go, and, uh, and that'll be turned back over to us. Another huge win for that is if you look right across the street, uh, there's a parking garage, 600 space parking garage that was just returned to us and complete uh, last month. That is a big deal because if you've ever driven along White Street during the day, it looks like five yard sales on a flea market all combined at the same time, right? Now we have 600 parking spots that people can use. Uh, that is a huge win and, uh, and it even has an elevator that works so it's ADA compliant with uh, handicap spots, everything you need and, uh, and we're working on uh, cleaning up the rest of White Street to make sure we have appropriate crosswalks, signs, uh, speed limits, speed bumps because there's still a lot of construction going on because just to the south of that, this huge building right here is a, is a new uh, MAGTAF hangar. So this will be able to host any squadron that the Marine Corps can combine for rotary wing tilt rotor. Uh, so you can put a 53K squadron in there, you can put a MUACE in there, and it has the room for two complete squadrons in it. And when that opens in 2025, uh, that will greatly increase our capacity for, uh, for spots on the flight line and spots in the hangar. And, uh, and the big reason we need this is because right down here, this is the current HMLA hangar. If you've been following anything with force design, you know there have been a lot of changes back and forth to aviation and what we need to support the MEF and deployable units. We shrunk down from three HMLAs to one on the East Coast. We're expanding back to two. And right now, they're in this hangar, which is uh, quite possibly one of the oldest and least uh, useful hangars that we have for a squadron of that size. So we're going to move those squadrons into the new hangar, and then we're going to demolish that hangar, and we're going to build a new hangar specific to HMLAs that will be able to host squadrons in the 21st century. So when you think about that hangar, that was built in the 70s, and that hangar didn't have any preparations or any capacity to handle things like laser-guided weapons or uh, some of the, the systems on the aircraft. Uh, we have a lot more... Uh, high-tech equipment, when we talk about things that eye-level units or, or a MALS would need to do to support a unit, we don't have the capacity to handle that in some of those older, uh, older facilities. Not to mention just things like essential services, plumbing, HVAC, uh, electrical, lights. All those are more expensive and more time-consuming to maintain, so the newer facilities we can get, the better off we're going to be. Uh, that's also one of the other projects that we submitted in the budget last year. It got approved, but we didn't get funding for. So we're hoping that we have the funding for it this year as we come through so we can start work on that. All right, last thing I'm going to talk about on this slide, as we look over here, this big red area here, that is the infiltration basin that I was talking about. And all the water you saw in all the other light blue areas is going to be funneled down uh, through stormwater systems into that infiltration basin. Two big bonuses with that. Not only does it get the water out and get us more area and square footage we can use for, uh, for other buildings and things we need to fight the, the, uh, the wing, but it also removes birds from the airfield. Birds congregate around water, and right now we have water just about every place surrounding the airfield. That will draw all the bird traffic out, and this area is also coincident with where we have the least amount of traffic uh, for anything that we have going in and out of New River. So everybody that's coming in from the north comes in this way. Everything coming in from the south comes in down here and comes into runway 23 and runway five. So this area right here, because of some of the other things we have located around there, has the least amount of traffic flying over it, so we're keeping all the birds where we have the least amount of airplanes. Huge win. Uh, and I do have one saved round this. Thanks, XO. This area right here, can you go back to that? All right, this area right here is called Echo Island. That used to be grass. We're reclaiming all of that and putting concrete there so we have more tarmac space, so we have more room to park all the aircraft that are going to be here uh, when that opens back up. Because of the larger size of all the aircraft, we need about 99 to 120 feet for an average space for a 53 or a V-22. That means we have less spaces with the current parking plan. We're going to have more apron space and more, uh, more parking. All right, next slide. Perfect. So now we're going to look at the south and eastern side of the airfield. Okay, we just finished talking about the area over here. This is the infiltration basin. This is the uh, current HMLA hangar. So as we look down here, here this is uh, some improvements to the Kayla, the combined arms loading area, okay, that we use for, uh, for ordnance operations. Okay, and you can see highlighted in yellow here are the approach paths for the runways for instrument approaches. Uh, of note in this slide, right here in the middle of the field, this is where we're gonna put our new fuel farm. So it's gonna be away from everything that is, uh, that is populated 
and, uh, and we're going to have fuel pits that are coincident with that. We'll also give us more space over here where our current fuel pits are that we can use to park aircraft if needed. Next to that, we have the, uh, uh, the maintenance barn for our MAXDET Marine Air Control Squadron. So the MAXDET are the ones who do mobile air traffic control for uh, a deployed unit. They do it in a field environment where our ATC personnel do it for uh, a garrison type thing or an air station. They have a small barn down there for some of their vehicles and their tactical equipment. Uh, that is scheduled to be finished in the next couple months as well. Okay, as we move over here to the, uh, to the southeast, you can see right here, this is the marina area. Starting in about three months, we're gonna have a new bathhouse put in at the marina, all right? Big win, we're gonna have a uh, new higher quality and uh, facilities down there that are better able to handle the traffic from the new facility when we built the marina. So rebuilt the marina, didn't rebuild the bathhouse, and now we're finally getting a new bathhouse there. Uh, so we're grateful for that. As we come across the, uh, uh, the water here in the New River, moving up to the north, this is AS-890, the mega hangar right here, and the parking garage. So in green is the parking garage, in blue is the mega hangar. We call it the mega hangar because it hosts four V-22 squadrons. Right now we have a project to uh, renovate the air handlers and the HVAC and the lighting in all four modules of that hangar, one module at a time. We've timed it with deployments and, and with uh, other moves for squadrons to have the least impact on the flight line. Uh, but over the next year to year and a half, we're gonna have all of the air handling and the lighting renovated in there so that we can do all of the maintenance we need to. We can cure aircraft. Uh, we have the right lighting in there so we can see to do maintenance on the aircraft. And, uh, and then on the other side of it, uh, we know that everybody over here on this side of the flight line is kind of alone and unafraid and has a 10 minute drive to get to anything. Uh, we're gonna have another warehouse over here to help with some of the, uh, uh, some of the supply issues and some of the things that those uh, squadrons need for support. Moving up a little bit to the north, you can see this little blue area right here. Uh, that blue area is called the Living Shoreline Project. Working with uh, uh, Department of Natural Resources and, uh, and getting some grants from state and federal agencies, we are going to shore up some of our, uh, the New River shoreline on there to help prevent erosion and to prevent some of our equipment that we have over there for ground air communications from having to be relocated. Uh, that's a great win and a great example of an IGS uh, which is an intergovernmental agreement that is between the, the host uh, community and the military to, uh, to co-pay for a project that has benefits to both. So, uh, so that's a great example of what we're doing, how we're working with the local community and both state and local agencies. All right over here, we, uh, the last thing we're gonna, the second to last thing we're gonna talk about is the new H&HS hangar, which is gonna open this fall. Uh, when we move that up, we're gonna close down the old base ops building and we're gonna move base ops into that hangar as well, and then we're gonna build a new crash fire rescue barn in the next couple of years to host that. So when this new hangar opens up, base ops will be run out of there, the C-12s will be parked there, and we'll have a space to host up to a four aircraft depth for smaller aircraft where they can bring them inside the hangar and do maintenance if they're here for an extended period of time and have a better transient line. Right. Then last, up here at the top, this is the All Hands Club. The All Hands Club has been closed for a couple of years. We anticipate getting that back this summer. The internal parts of it are gonna be done, completely renovated 21st century. And, uh, and as soon as that's done, we'll be able to open it up. Immediately following that, we have another project that's gonna happen with it to, uh, to work on some of the things with the external parts of that hangar that we didn't get to do, or excuse me, of that uh, club that we didn't get to do with the original project. Part of that is gonna be the pool. So the pool will not be open this summer, as far as we can tell, just because of the uh, uh, the construction that still has to go on outside and we don't want people uh, trying to swim over there we might have dangerous uh, environment with construction so anticipate summer of 2025 will be when that pool opens back up all right i just threw a whole lot of stuff out at everybody for construction uh it was a quick lap around the airfield if you have questions on any of it i can go back and i can talk a little more on it or i can uh, bring in a lefty from the bullpen from our ine staff or for uh, commander Surrey from public works if you guys have any questions if not, I'll move on to the next part. All right, awesome. I'm done with the slides. Thankfully, I'm done with the pointer too. All right, next thing I wanna talk about is uh, some of the things we have coming up in housing. And uh, I'm just gonna briefly touch on them if you have any questions. We do have the, uh, uh, the experts here from the housing team that can be able to talk about that with, uh, with John and the team over here. Uh, but there's several things coming up. Specific to McCutcheon Manor, uh, there's a playground on McAvoy Street that is going to be demoed. 
All right, uh, we got approval for that, and we're working for a time frame uh, in the next couple months to get that, uh, that playground demoed. We're also doing renovation of a basketball court, all right? So expect that to happen in the, uh, in the next month or two. And then we have some houses that are being worked on. From Hurricane Florence, five years ago, we had two houses that have to be demolished. Those are in the queue to be demolished soon, and we also have two that are undergoing repairs, which are the last two that have to be repaired from Florence. Then, uh, all of McCutcheon Manor has a project for window replacement. Vinyl windows going in, in in phases, and you should get notices on that if you're from McCutcheon Manor. Uh, but there are going to be new vinyl windows and some of the uh, ancillary things to support those windows that are, uh, that are installed in the houses in McCutcheon. Moving over to Peterfield Point, there's still one house in Peterfield Point that has damage from uh, Hurricane Florence that we're fixing. Uh, that's on Timmerman Street, and that one is uh, currently under repairs and should be done in the next couple of months. Then we'll have one more house open for residents in, uh, in Peterfield. All right, next big thing with housing that, uh, that we probably really need to talk about and remind everybody, and we're gonna get some, uh, some WAN mail out on this, is uh, the uh, electricity usage. We suspended uh, resident payments for uh, electricity overages during, uh, during COVID. We're gonna restart that, uh, that cost sharing program. So uh, standard pay, or excuse me, standard uh, electricity consumption is gonna be gauged out for every type of house in, in every area, and it'll be broadcast out to residents, and you'll get a statement every month if you've ever been through one of these programs before that says, hey, here's what the average usage in your area is, here's what your usage is, and then if you are within, I think it's a $25 window, John, is what it's reasonably been, but yeah. Yeah, they'll have, they'll have a window. If you're within that, that plus or minus 10% or whatever the window is, grace period, nothing owed and uh, nothing returned. If you're in excess on consumption, uh, you'll be charged for it. If you are, are below the low end of the, uh, of the standard deviation, you'll actually get money back. So it's incentivizing residents to, to be good stewards of electricity, and you can make some money back on it. Uh, as that program gets rolled out, you'll get notifications on it in your email, and we will have stuff about it advertising when that's going to start and, uh, and what the program looks like. If you have questions, you can come see us at the end, and we're happy to, uh, happy to speak in more detail about that. That's all I had on housing. Do we have anything else, John? Did I hit them all? Yep, come on. So on that uh, program, thanks, CEO, that's going to be at least a year. Um, so what happened is we stopped the program after Florence because we couldn't track it anyway. And then not long after that, uh, the Congress with the NDAA from 2020 suspended it across the entirety of DOD. There were some accusations of improper meters and different things going on in different places. So before the program comes back online, we had to certify to Congress via OSD that every home's been checked, the meter is new and checked, and, and only then, after they agree, uh, can we restart the program. Why does it matter? Well, it matters because if you live here, uh, pre-Florence, we had 7,500 residents. We got down to 6,200 after Florence because of damage and people leaving, and now we're back now just over 7,000 but we're still spending $1.3 million more per year on electricity with 500 less residents. So you can call it behavior modification, but for everyone that lives here, uh, that 1.3 million is your BAH going to pay electricity bills for everywhere because you pay them via AMCC. So it's important we get some of the behavior modified for those that are on the, on the outside, for those that are good stewards of, of energy, they'll get a credit like the CO said. Uh, but again, I want to I want to state it's going to be at least a year before that comes back into place. All right, as that comes out, we'll make sure there's plenty of rollout and lead time on it, so everybody understands the program. And we're going to have another town hall, at least one more before that happens, to uh, to be able to answer and, and field more questions on it. But uh, it won't be a surprise when it happens, and we'll make sure everybody has a uh, all the opportunity in the world to uh, to understand the program as as it rolls out. All right, next couple of things I want to talk about aren't necessarily things that are uh, uh, MCCS slash food service related, so not, not really Milcon, but we do have uh, some upgrades to the vendor facilities. The old Marine Federal Building is going to have a Panda Express in it. Uh, it was Panda Express Hibachi-san. The contract is uh, morphed back and forth a couple times due to the same issues we've had with all the other Milcon, but this was really because the... Uh, the company who's uh, investing in it had other projects they were doing out in Colorado and, uh, and couldn't invest in both at the same time, but it has been reduced to just a Panda Express 
and they're in the, uh, the design phase again and, and hopefully are going to start construction on that so we can see that next year and that'll be in the Marine Federal Building. We're also going to get another uh, food vendor in the SMP building to replace where the Heavenly Brew Cafe used to be. And a long time ago, it was a Domino's and then a little Anthony's Pizza. I uh, can't say what the vendor is now, but we're in final negotiations to get another vendor in there to, to open different food options in, uh, in the New River area that'll be open longer than the, uh, the seven-day store. So, uh, so that'll help out. Look for that to come, and, and that is probably going to be as soon as the summer of 2024, so in the next couple of months we could see that because there's very little that has to be done to, to convert that current facility and, and get people in there. <clears throat> All right, I have two more pitches, and after that, uh, we'll migrate over to Q&A. The first pitch is that uh, if you didn't know, the tax center on uh, New River is open. It's in our legal building, AS216. Uh, we have Marines who have been trained, and we have a, a certified staff uh, that can help if you have very complex returns. But we offer free returns and free service for both uh, federal and state taxes on New River if you're uh, interested in doing that. Uh, they do great. and. So Sergeant Major and I get to see every ICE comment that comes through New River for every, uh, every entity, and I have never seen as many positive ICE comments for any entity or any facility as I've seen for the tax center in New River. It is a terrific service, and, uh, and it's one of the hidden gems, and, and I know Captain Webster isn't, uh, isn't unhappy at all to share his building with them for a couple months out of the year just because of the traffic it brings in and the huge service it, it brings to the Marines. And I think last year they, they said it was in the four or five million dollar uh, return thing that both Lejeune and New River uh, did to, uh, uh, to get tax returns for Marines and their families in the area. Uh, the service is free. You can go in and walk in or you can call and make an appointment either way. And if you just Google New River Tax Center, uh, it'll give you a location with a pin and a phone number that you can call and make an appointment. Or you can walk in. It's located with the, uh, uh, in the same building as legal AS216. Lastly, since we're coming up on, uh, on hurricane season, right, and, uh, and some of, the, uh, some of the, the people may be new here or may not have complete access, we do have a notification system that we can use, and we can add anybody who is a, a military service member or a dependent who is registered in DEERS to get messages on a cell phone or personal email, right? If you have a service member who is... Uh, deployed right now and you can't get access to it, we can help you out in our S3 team. And if you let us know afterwards, we can, uh, we can link you up so you can get, a, uh, get access to it. But if not, we have pamphlets up here that, that instructs you how to do it. It's called the ad hoc system. And basically what happens is it's like an amber alert for anything we're doing on base, right? We can send out an alert to everybody who's registered in the system that says, we're doing a training exercise and this street is gonna be closed for these two hours. or there's an active shooter at the food line right outside the front gate, and the front gate is going to be on lockdown. We're in force protection condition delta. So whatever it is, we can give notifications on what happens, what the incident is, where you can go for more information, and when there's an all clear. Uh, you can get that on your cell phone or a personal email, and the only requirement to be able to register on your own is have somebody with a CAC that can get on to, uh, to a government computer. When you do, there's instructions on here to be able to... Uh, uh, open it, register yourself, and register uh, any dependents who have, uh, who are registered in DEERS with their, uh, uh, with their phone number or personal email. We have uh, some flyers up here, and if you have questions on it, happy to help. And, uh, and if you can't log on for any reason, I had problems trying to log my wife onto it, uh, our S3 at station will help you do that and be able to take care of you and make sure you have uh, access to it should you want that. And uh, the time to do that is now because in the next couple months we get into hurricane season, uh, it sucks to not have all the information right away, and that's the primary means that we push information out to to, uh, uh, to people who live and work on New River. Yeah. Ah, one more thing. Thank you, Julie. I knew I had one more. Hey, we also just got notification today that starting next Monday, uh, both unaccompanied housing and, uh, and family housing, uh, there's tenant satisfaction surveys and quality of life surveys. So quality of life survey if you live in the barracks, if you live in family housing, tenant satisfaction survey. And I know AMCC is going to be pushing this out, but starting on Monday, the 18th, and going through May 31st, you have the ability to fill out a survey. And what you put on this survey will directly impact the services and the, and the money and the, uh, the programs we get to make housing better. Uh, so Sergeant Major and I and, and the team are going to have a huge campaign to... Uh, uh, Kind of get out the uh, get out the surveys and uh, make sure people have their have an opportunity to have their say.
but we'd ask that uh, you come up here at the end and you can take one of these flyers for the, uh, uh, for the survey as well. And uh, remember, the more information you put in there, the more detailed it is, the more you can help yourselves and help everybody else who lives and, uh, and works on New River. All right. I talked a lot. Uh, I love a captive audience, but uh, all important information. Hey, uh, we're going to do this again in the fall after we have the, uh, the big summer PCS season. And, uh, and I'll do these town halls as long as there's a demand signal for them. So if, if more people want to do them, let us know. We're happy to, to come out here and, and, uh, and do as many of these town halls as people want. If there's specific topics that you want us to talk about and prepare for in a town hall, we can do that. We did one about a year and a half ago, John, for the, uh, about a year ago, for the uh, third party inspections to talk about what the process was, the results, and why we were doing them, why were there people coming through your homes. Uh, so we're happy to do it for any, uh, any type of event or issue you have. And, uh, and if not, we're always accessible if you have any questions uh, you can go through your AMCC, uh, your RAB representatives, and, uh, and Sergeant Major and I, and our S4 and I&E, and, &E, and, uh, and all the staff are always at the uh, RABs to as many as we can get to, and, uh, and you have access to us in the town hall as well. All right, so you can go through housing to get to us. ICE comments work as well, but we'd ask you to go through housing. Uh, we're never going to tell no, anybody to not put in an ICE comment, but we'd ask that you give us an opportunity to work, and if you do put in an ICE comment, please leave contact information so we can follow up and make sure we, uh, uh, we reconcile and we fix uh, whatever the, the concern is that you have. All right, at this point, uh, I'm open for questions and I'll stay here as long as anybody has questions and that goes for the staff as well. Uh, and, and if you have no questions, uh, I thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you taking your time out of this evening to, to come out here and, uh, and have a great night. If there are questions though, uh, if you have a question, I'm gonna repeat it on here so we can get it on the, uh, on the video. So. Uh, if we decide to post this online, that we'll have all the questions as well. Kenny, you got one? Ah, all right. Anything else that I missed? Ladies, John? All right. Yeah, good, all right. Oh. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Great. So uh, if you are a housing resident, uh, you will get notification of those surveys uh, in your email and whatever contact information you have from housing. In addition, we're going to make sure we have it out at the marquees and we'll have it available at the commissary and the PX so that everybody knows. And the same will go for the, uh, the unaccompanied housing as well. So if you live in the barracks, there'll be two different uh, uh, survey uh, information flyers up. So uh, uh, make sure you get the one that, that's appropriate for your, uh, your residents. All right, thank you all very much. I appreciate your time and have a great night.